Thank you, Julia. Come in. Ah, oh, Benjamin, do sit down, will you? Thank you, sir. Uh, coffee? Uh, oh, how kind. Good, there we are. Thank you. Now, uh, you like her? Oh, she's, she's very nice, sir, yes. Oh, good. Well, I, I like an employee who has the same tastes as I do. They're the ones who uh, get on here, you know. Oh. No, Benjamin, I've been looking at this account you've done, and by George, I couldn't have done it better myself. Thank you, sir. <laughs> yes, I must say, we do think alike. Yes. Yes, yes sir. indeed. You know, this, I um, that, I'll have to speak to J.R. about you, you know. Oh. This could mean promotion. Oh. It? Good indeed, yes. <laughs> I like a chap who's, who's smart, you know, yes. and um, intelligent. Yes. Push, 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 push. push. <laughs> It's the Benny Hill Show. Here is Benny Hill. Oh, listen to the story of a Greek romantic fool. I fell in love with my teacher when I was at school. But I knew our love could never be. She could not be mine. For she was nearly 23, I was 39. I went to my first dance and I met sweet Mylene. She had the loveliest eyes that I have ever seen. I said, within your lovely eyes, I could live and die. She said, the left one ought to suit you then, cause it's got a sty. One day I was as miserable as I have ever been. I went into a phone box to try to get in touch with Jean. A policeman came and turned me out, I still can hear him yell. Then he went back into the phone box and he turned her out as well. She's got eyes that glow like cigarettes with ashtrays underneath. And when she bites her fingernails, her mother hides her teeth. But she wouldn't let me marry Jean. She said it was because she thought I was effeminate and compared with her I was. <laughs> so come, my pretty Greek girl, come and dance with me. Shine upon me as the golden sun shines on the sea. Fill my lonely eager arms with your sweet ecstasy. Oh, come, my pretty Greek girl, come and dance with me. I'll <laughs> Jolly nice to be with you once again. Now, those of you who have thrilled to the exploits of the Baron and the man in a suitcase will be delighted to know that yet another Mid-Atlantic series is about to explode upon your screens. Whenever a crime is committed, which the police cannot solve through lack of convenience, <laughs> they send for the man who keeps our town clean. Undercover Sanitary Inspector, starring Mervyn Dirt as Dan Dan the Laboratory Man. Mary Tyler Bathroom as Ida Ajax. And Tibbles the Wonder Cat as Wana. What? Oh no. Right, thank you. Uh, keep close. I'm going to wash that gal right out of my air. I'm going to wash that. Hello, Skipper. You look flushed. What's up? <laughs> they got bathtub gym. Poor bathtub. <laughs> Tell me, how did it happen? The oldest trick in the game. The exploding B-Day. Yes. <laughs> An old hand like Jim. Shot up. <laughs> they asked. For it's some of them. I say, steady on, old man. I'm sorry, Teddy. Code names only. I'm sorry, Black Fox. That's, <laughs> that's all right, Brown Ale. Brown Owl. <laughs> I say, did they, uh, did they find his ball cock? I don't know. If they get their hands on that, it means twenty years' work down the drain. <laughs> Damned ingenious plan that. A transmitting ball cock in every bathroom in the Kremlin. We could monitor their every movement. Take it. Hello, Brown Owl here. Initials only. <laughs> B.O. here. <laughs> yes, I'm with the B.F. <laughs> yes. I beg your pardon, who? You are? Who is it? I don't know. She says she's the Bureau. A Bureau's a tall thing with drawers. <laughs> Do you want to talk to her? 
Hello. Oh, it's the Dozien Bureau. Ah, oh, the Dozien. Oui, oui, madame. C'est vrai, Nescaf. N'est-ce pas? Oui, bonus knock at Senior Uda. They what? Oh, sir, those wicked communists, they've been causing consternation on the continent. What? They've been creeping into the YWCA's at night. Yes. And putting the seats up. <laughs> damned reds get everywhere. Oh, les cochons. Wait a minute, look. What's that, Skipper? What is it? Read the Situations Wanted column. What, you give me the push or something? No, 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 no. I think there's something there that might interest you. Woman with mallet wishes to meet gent with bow legs. <laughs> Object croquet. Is that the one you... Oh. No, not that one. Man wanted for skilled work in dynamite factory. Must be willing to travel. <laughs> Read on. Socialist with knife and fork. Wishes to meet capitalist with steak and kidney pudding. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, try the next one. Woman who takes in washing on Tuesday and Wednesday wants somewhere to hang out on Thursday and Friday. Is that the one? No. Oh. Try the one after that. I love it. Signed, Nina. That's it! What do you mean, that's it? Well, don't you understand, you idiot? I love it! I love it! Well, so do I. What's that got to do with it? You ain't got any monopoly on it, you know. Don't you understand what that means? What is, I love it, spelt backwards? I love it. Tivoli. 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 My God, you move fast. I do, don't I? Yeah. <laughs> don't you understand what it means yes. now? It means that Nina has made it to the Tivoli bar. If anyone can get their hands on Jim's ballcock, it's Nina. <laughs> Tell me, where is this Tivoli bar? Istanbul. Off you go. Istanbul? I say, Skipper, I'd rather stay here. <laughs> I wouldn't dabble there if I were you. You might have your hand blown off. You mean it's a booby trap? <laughs> <laughs> they don't have things all their own way, you know. We still have a few tricks up our sleeve. Ooh, not just up your sleeve, either. Here. <laughs> Tell us about this here Nina. She'll, um, she'll be wearing rubber gloves, mm -hmm. a plastic Mac, and red army boots. How will I recognize her? <laughs> Use your initiative. <laughs> I think it will rain this evening. But I do not think it will rain tomorrow. Red sky at night is shepherd's delight. In Spain, the rain stays mainly in the plain. The moving finger writes and having writ. Moves on to write another bit. <laughs> a wet seagull never flies at night. I've got a lovely bunch of coconuts. <laughs> you will never find hairs on a dock egg. <laughs> but you will always find hairs on an ape. It is only the hairs on a gooseberry <laughs> that stop it from being a grape. So you're one of us. Of course I am. Oh. For a moment, I thought you were one of them. Thank you very much. <laughs> Walk with me. Very well, Madam Comrade. <laughs> To the free world. I'll drink to that. You don't mean I, I think I should go to the bathroom. Mr. Undercover Sanitary Inspector. I've been rumbled. What have you done with her? She foolishly sat in a bath, which previously had been coated with instant glue. You can imagine the result. Disaster. Yes, you imagine what happened. You went very well. <laughs> 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 Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, you think so and all. Yes, you think so and all. Come on. Come on. Right. Thank goodness you got here, Teddy. What the devil are you doing here? I don't know what you said. I went to that bar in Istanbul. Istanbul, you idiot. I said the bar at the Istanbul. The Bull Hotel at East Ham. Oh, come on. No, he tells me. <laughs> Listen, I've been in there all night. I've been in there all night with that horrible, ugly thing lying down there. Like, I don't know what. All night long I've been shouting, let me out, let me out. Let me in! Let me in! Oh, let me in! Oh, let me in! Oh, let me in! Oh, let me in. I just come out to say how much I miss old Reverend Gray. Well, of course, he want everyone's cup of tea, but, well, I like his style. He give a service with a smile, and his sermons had a bit of jollity. Like, sometimes, just for a lark, he dropped the odd remark, just to see that everyone was listening. Like, he say, I know a man named Ho, because the vicar stubbed his toe right bang in the middle of the christening. <laughs> <laughs> And when his fried cod was bad, a lot of people would have got mad and told the waitress to tell the chef to chuck his hand in. But he just looks up and says, Miss, it would seem to me that this is the piece of cod that passeth all understanding. <laughs> he says, here, a week last Saturday, we went down Cheddar Way at a picnic in the caves just for a treat. I took the choir and Reverend George. I says, did you see the devil's gorge? He says, no, I can't stand watching people eat. <laughs> Last week, we buried old Fred. Well, we had to, he was dead. <laughs> At the funeral, the vicar meets his Uncle Jack. He says, well, and how old are you? He says, me, I'm 102. He said, it's hardly worth your while of going back. <laughs> but he always was a visionary. Perhaps that's why he become a missionary. Went to Africa to help some native tribe. He came home on leave one day. We was round there right away wondering what wondrous things he would describe. He says, they big Zulus all wears fig leaves. The little pygmies, they wears tea leaves. <laughs> oh, he had some interviewing tales to tell. I says, here, tell me about the pygmy. Does he really practice polygamy? He says, he don't have to, he does it rather well. <laughs> he says, he says, I met this plate-lipped Ubangi lass in this tall jungle grass, and I asked her to direct me to the ship. She says, I'd like to answer you, but I find that hard to do, because you see, you're standing on me bottom lip. <laughs> <laughs> he says, they gets drunk and goes into a trance and gets up and starts to dance on broken glass and sharpened bamboo roots and burning red-hot coal, and it don't hurt them at all. Because, you see, they wear these great big hob boots. <laughs> <laughs> well, one day he packed his tent. Back to Africa he went. Because he had faith of that there was no doubt. Like when he seen this lion limping with a thorn stuck in its foot, he just went up and he gently took it out. And then he said a little prayer. And he blessed the lion then and there and stroked its mane. And this great big lion let him. And then, to show it could understand, it went up and it licked his hand and raised its paw and knocked him down and ate him. <laughs> well, I don't like this new vicar we got. And his wife, she ain't so hot. He refers to her as my good lady Ellen. She walks around in fancy clothes like she got a smell underneath her nose. And half the time, he looks like what she's smelling. <laughs> I tell you, when I first got my place, the garden was a disgrace. I tell you, it looked just like a wilderness. Well, I worked day and night until I got it right, until I had cleared up the rotten mess. Well, they too come past one day, sees my floral display and my lawn all smelling sweet and newly mown. He says, it shows what God can do with a little help from you. I says, you should have seen it when he had it on his own. <laughs> Still, I'll see Reverend Gray again when my turn comes to go, and then, cool, I sees it in me mind's eye every day. There'd be a band of happy angels all laughing, fit to bust, and telling them the tale would be Reverend Gray.
And now, ladies and gentlemen, for some more of those moments of television when things don't go quite the way that they planned. It's my foot! <laughs> Get it off! <laughs> Get it off, please. <laughs> these, happen, these things happen in the, in the best of studios. And this ain't the best of studios. <laughs> Hiya, baby. Show you my 38s if you show me yours. I know my father was a man. What was your mother, a jockey? Wait, hell, I don't think he died of free. Cole, I'm calling you. You calling me, Kincaid? I'm calling you, Cole. Then go for your guns. Hold everything now. I'm gonna get you for killing my brother. You. you. <laughs> No matter what your washing machine is, whether it's the Ben Point, the Hot Wash, or the new Robins, whatever. <laughs> what was that for? Well, I didn't know you were going to move. I'm sorry. Can we go again? Hey, bartender, give me a beer, will you? Beer. Hiya, Carl. Why don't you get lost? I'll have you know my grandpappy was an old gorilla fighter. What was your grandmommy? An old gorilla? <laughs> <laughs> you kill me, <laughs> Well, I reckon I'll hit the trail now. That is strong. But clean and bright. Yes, she's been using Percy. And it shows. Hold it. Um, good evening. I should like now to show you some of my 71 air styles. This one here, as you can see, it's had like, the full crimping and back combing. It's quite enchanting, isn't it? Over here, this one is more nonchalant, more evocative of the youth of today. Here, too, mind. So there's my old granddaddy, and he was surrounded by 4,000 Indians. And the only person he had with him was a young 22-year-old lieutenant. Then he turned to this lieutenant, and he said, whatever you do, don't take prisoners. He sounds quite a guy, Carl. She put me right, right off then. I was so strong. I didn't know she was so strong. A nice clear soup. And uh, it has been done now, Johnny, dear. And it has been straight. So those nasty little pieces have been done now, dear, not now, dear. And it comes out nice and smooth and... <laughs> Thank you, Johnny, dear. Well, there... Calling you, you calling me Kincaid. I'm calling you, Cole. And go for your guns, right? Of <laughs> but what are we gonna fix them? <laughs> Peter, I don't cry. Help, help me, somebody. Oh God, I'm gonna die here alone in the Arizona desert. <laughs> You, you, get off! You at the back! You're in the Arizona desert! Oh, you twit! Oh, no. Don't oh, jump over! No, I'm don't going! Jump. Do everything no, to me! Oh, my God! Do what? Do what? George! You've got to crouch more! Well, down. I did, I did. I went, I went no, down. Back. I went, cut I went, it! I went, cut it! I went. I Get went, down! Yes, all right, I went down. John. Again! Yeah. Go on! What about my feet? What the hell with your feet? Oh, Jump, six, man! Six You're an actor! Six bloody times on that bloody floor. <laughs> okay, bartender, give me a beer. Beer! Hi, Carl! Hi. Reckon I'll uh, 
Mosey on down to the old corral. <laughs> Somebody who never saved. Why didn't somebody search? I'm sorry. When she's up, you might have saved. It requires, of course, just a little pinch of salt and a soup song, which, by the way, is not French for soup spoon, of cayenne pepper. And, um, Johnny, could you get the cayenne, the cayenne pepper, please? Thank you. And, um, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to welcome to the show the lovely Nanette. foot. Uh, pardon? Does, does, does this foot belong to you? Oh, uh, this book. book. It's a book. It's it a book? Yes. I thought it was a foot. <laughs> Silly me. <laughs> what, what, what then is foot? Uh, that's foot. No, that is shoe. Surely that is shoe. <laughs> that is a shoe. That is a shoe. And that is a foot. And that is a foot. <laughs> <laughs> Learning all the time. <laughs> I know another one. Knee. That is a knee. No, no, no. That's a knee. Yeah, that is a knee. Masculine knee. Feminine knee. No, no. That's a knee. Oh, uh, I could I have my... Um... Oh, I give you back your foot. No, no, no. Shoo, shoo, shoo. <laughs> Learning all the time. <laughs> I'm, I must write down the new word I learn. The professor says, when you get a new word, write it down. 
And he says, I want the right and written right. I don't want the right and written rotten. <laughs> That's what he says to Professor. <laughs> oh dear, I have, I have left my foot at home. My book. My book, my book at home. Never mind, I shall remember. When I get a new word, it goes straight up here in my bum. <laughs> your, your head. What? No, no, your head. This is a your head? No, this is my head, yeah. and that is your head. Ah, this is my head, and that is your head. <laughs> well, well, <laughs> learning all the time. <laughs> what is bum? <laughs> It's not a nice word. We, we don't say it. What do you say? Well, we say um, a bottom. Don't say bum, say bottom. <laughs> what is a bottom? Well, it's a... Uh, it's sort of... Oh, it's, it's a naughty one. Oh, it's a naughty one. Bottom. <laughs> well, well, well. <laughs> this is my bottom. <laughs> this is my bottom. That is your bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Learning all the time. <laughs> what, what watch is it? Pardon? Have you the correct watch on you? Oh. Oh, six, oh, watch? Such much? <laughs> I shall go across the park now to the cafe and, and have fish and chips. Oh, do you like our fish and chips? No, I hate your fish and chips, but that's the only thing I know how to ask no, for. There are other things besides <laughs> well, fish and chips. What, is, you know. uh, what do you think of uh, steak and kidney pudding? Oh, Kate, Try it. Steak Kate, Kate and Sydney who? No, no. <laughs> steak and kidney pudding. Steak and kinky pudding. No, no, no. Kidney. You kidding me pudding? No, no. You kidding me pudding? Kidney. Me pudding. P pudding. P P pudding. <laughs> oh dear, I'm sorry. That was naughty. I must not do that. I'm sorry. I couldn't help it. I like you. I do. I like you, bust. You mustn't say that. Why not? It's true. Of all the girls I meet in London, I like you best. <laughs> no, no, no. You mean best. Best. Best, best. That is more good. Yes. Ah, yes. what is best? <laughs> I, I don't think I want to explain that. I have said, I have upset you. I have said naughty words. I'm, I'm always doing that. It, it's, it's all right. No, no, it's no, right. no. Honestly, no. Don't, don't worry. No, it's no, right. no, 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 no. <laughs> I am a terrible man. I, I always, every time I open my mouth, I put my foot in it. It's, well, it's look, terrible. No, 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 no. I should go across to the cafe and have fish and chips by myself. Well, look. I oh, why didn't you come back to my place? I couldn't do that. Look, I've got enough here for two. <laughs> no, what would your mother and father say? I live on my own. Look, there's a 51 bus. <laughs> Uh, there's a 51 bus. Yes. If we hurry, we can make it. Naked? Why do you say naked? No, no, make it. Make it. Get on the bus. Get on the bus is make it. Yes. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, what is naked? I'll explain that when we get there. Yeah, yeah, that, that's good, that's good. Oh. German? Hmm? Polish? No, I come from Bradford. Only you see, if I don't talk foreign, I'll get out. <laughs> come in, my God. Good night, darling. Good night. Quick, quick. Ah, oh. Sorry, darling, I forgot me fags. <laughs> night, George. <laughs> author of Love, Bread and Crumpets, View Up the Flu, I Was a Witch Doctor's Clerk, and more recently the science fiction novel The Thing Without a Thing, talks about his new book. But first of all, a visit to Dimpton-on-Sea's new culture complex. Uh, Rembrandt. Uh, oh, yeah, there's no doubt about uh, that. Uh, the sweeping lines, you know, something like that. Um, isn't that a Picasso? Not the Chipolata, that is right. <laughs> Yeah, oh, that, oh, that, yeah, yeah, yes. oh, that'll be Chipolata. Oh, that'll be him, you know. Oh, yeah. Because, uh, yeah, yes. I, I, he had a few when he'd done that, though. No, <laughs> Painted during his blue period. Oh, you could see he wasn't happy when he'd done that. <laughs> though, <can't> you? <laughs> well, you couldn't tell. <laughs> oh, 
so sorry. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Uh, <laughs> well, I have been enjoying a marvellous hour here uh, in this particular art uh, development with the curator himself, uh, Fred Scuttle. Evening, sir. Good evening, viewers. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Scuttle. Now, tell me, uh, Mr. Scuttle, which of these paintings here is your favourite? Without any doubt at all, sir, that one there, sir. Uh, and painted by... I did that one, sir. Did it myself. <laughs> but isn't that a Rubens? Where? That's... Oh, that! Yeah. yeah, that's a Rubens. Yeah, that's a Rubens. I was talking about that one, sir. <laughs> I done that myself, that you know, sir. They're both very nice, aren't they, sir? They both seem to have, you know, a little certain charm, you know. Yes, sir. I think this one has more to say, though. Yes. <laughs> They're very popular, that one is, you know. <laughs> I did it from memory. Really? I did, yes. yes. You know. Well, um, Mr. Scuttle, yes. what can you tell us about Rubens? Rubens, sir, Edward Everett Rubens, <laughs> sir, was born... And when he grew up, sir, he became an artist, you see, sir. Yes, no. And he, he was a painter, you see, sir. And he painted these lovely, luscious, beautiful, unclad, completely naked... You're dribbling, sir. <laughs> Lady, you do understand? Yes, I do understand. Yes, that, that is yes, it, yes. sir, you see. And it's a wonder he had any time for any work, isn't it, sir? <laughs> I do, but he did that. You see, he painted them like that, sir, because, you see, he was a figurist. He was a traditionalist. He was a dirty old man, sir. <laughs> I mean, him over here, sir, Rembrandt. Sir. Rembrandt, yes. Johann Sebastian Rembrandt. Yes. He could have painted nude ladies, sir, but he preferred to paint old men with beards. What would you call him? A twit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm only joking, of course. We've got a bit of fun with these artists, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, like old Van Gogh, sir. Anything you said to Van Gogh went in one ear and stayed there. <laughs> Why was that? <laughs> well, he cut his ear off, didn't he? You see? He cut his ear off and sent it to his young lady, you see, sir. Yes, of course. Why do you think he did that? Nobody else you I know. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps he wanted to hear from us, sir. <laughs> I'll tell you, sir, that they're a funny lot. These artists are, you know. They're very bohemian, them, you know. Bohemian, yeah. they are, sir. They uh, have little peccadillos. <laughs> <laughs> I find that hard to believe, sir. Especially him, who painted that, sir. Aren't they, aren't they those... Scaly things that David Attenborough brings back from Paranoia, sir. No, 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 I think you're getting confused. No, those are armadillos. Arm armadillos, yes, yes, yes arm them. armadillos. I see, yes. sir, yes. Now, now, tell me, yes, sir. why do you think so many modern paintings are quite so bizarre? I mean, for instance, where are today's portrait painters? Well, sir, all I can answer you with that is where are today's models, sir? Yeah. I mean, nowadays, we, 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 we're becoming the, the, the look-alike people, so everybody's face is the same. They all go to work together, so they all go to bed together. Well, they go to work together anyway, sir. I mean, everybody's <laughs> becoming the same. There's no individuality, sir. Like, look, look let me give you an example. Yeah, let me give you yeah. instance, sir. Yeah. Over here, sir. Look at that, the moaning Lisa, sir. <laughs> I mean, look at that face, the way you could almost hear her talk, sir. What is she saying? My girdle is killing me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we always say, sir. Oh, I'm only joking, sir. And over here, sir, the laughing cavalier, old sir. I mean, where would you get a face like that? I've just seen it, sir. What? Come into the light, sir. Yes, I'm sorry. God, I couldn't see the wood for the trees. I've just seen it. Your head, sir. Yes? And your face. Oh, it's, it's a little bit of face fungus on that face, sir. Yes. You'd be a dead ringer for that one over there, sir. Oh, really? You would, really. You've got, you've got, you've got the sort of face an artist loves, sir. It's mm. a challenge. You see, sir, yeah. it is. It's sort of. It, it, it's funny without being vulgar. You do understand, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks like it's worn out two bodies. <laughs> <laughs> it's that sort of a face and those delicate aqualong features, sir. Could you just turn your head a little to the side, sir? Just a little bit more, a little bit more. There we are. That's lovely, sir. Smashing, you, you sir. like my profile? No, you've been eating garlic. It's knocking me out off. <laughs> Yeah, I could get you a bit of modelling here, you know, sir. Modelling? Right? Yes, yes, three, three, three bob an hour, you know. Three shillings an hour? Yes, sir. Is that all? Well, that's all we pay Miss Dimpton on sea, sir. And she's barefoot all over for that. <laughs> three shillings an hour? Yes, sir. I mean, how can she live on that? Well, that and her old age pension, sir. <laughs> she does very well indeed, sir, yes. <laughs> well, indeed. Now, now, Mr. Yes. Mr. Scuttle, yes. I believe in this arts complex you have a very marvellous concert hall. Oh, we do. With a concert every night of the week, mm. sir. Every day. I tell you what, for the young in heart, for the swingers, for the kids, for the way out crowd, yeah. Gypsy Fred and the South Shield Syncopators, sir. <laughs> Featuring their Gypsy vocalist, 
You'd go potty, sir. Really? Oh, long black hair, sir. Bare shoulders, low-cut blouse, golden earrings. A lovely fella, sir. <laughs> Eve, you'd love him. And he swings. He's with all the modern numbers, oh, you really? know, sir. Really? Oh, you should hear him do. You made me love you. You woke me up to do it. You woke me up to do it. <laughs> Them swinging, you were going a bit there, sir. Well, you were going a bit. I saw that. But, yeah. got me rather good. Right. But, but what, what? And there we leave the Dimpton complex and return you to the studio. With the closing of the variety theatres, the art of the quick change artist became a thing of the past. But here at least is one. Here at least is one person who's keeping alive this most unusual occupation. Now, Mr. Speedy Zappa, you are a director, producer, writer, and now quick change artist. Tell me, how do you do all these things? Brilliantly. <laughs> I see. Tell me, uh, what made you take up this unusual occupation of, of, of quick change artists? As a protest against my family, they have two speeds, dead, slow, and stop. My father moves like a, like a nudist trying to climb a barbed wire fence. My sister went out with the sailor, and before she could say I'm not that kind of a girl, she was. My young brother, I said, where's my book? He said, it's over there. No, he said, it's over there. I said, if you can show me anything lazier than that, I'll give you ten shillings. He said, put it in there. <laughs> I never did. Now, I understand that, that some of your quick changes are so fast that, that they cannot actually be seen by the naked eye. Well, I suppose if you mean something like... This, then, uh, yes, yes, I do. <laughs> I must say, that, that really is remarkable. It is, isn't it? Uh, yes. Is it also true that, that um, you not only change costumes sometimes, but also character? Yes, I, would you like to see me? Yes, I would indeed. Right, you are. Off we go. <coughs> Splendid. <laughs> I wonder how many of you recognize who this is. I would, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'll have you know, my dear, my father made the Brooklyn Bridge. My father made the Empire State Building. What did your father ever make? What did my father ever make? Look me over, big boy. Just look me over. I fell in love with Mary from the dairy. But Mary didn't fall in love with me. Here, now, now here's one. Here, now listen, listen. Here, Jack and Jill went up a hill for a little hanky panky. You came down with half a crown, he must have been a Yankee. There's one, isn't it? <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, I give you my most popular request. It's beef! It's beef! <laughs> it's beef! <laughs> but now, what is possibly my most difficult impression? Bye bye, Blues. Oh, I can't keep that up much longer. Not at my age. <laughs> I feel better now. Well, good night, Mr. Morley. Thank you, and good night, Speedy Zappa. And good night, everyone. <laughs> Last night, I held a little hand. It made my sad heart sing. It was the loveliest hand I've ever held. Four aces and a king. Just <laughs> I hadn't finished. 30 days hath September, April, June and November. All the rest have 31. It's so unfair. Just two of the many... Roses are red and violets are blue. So goes the age-old rhyme. But I know roses are blue and violets are red. I've seen them hanging on a line. <laughs> Just three of the... Oh, of the collected poems of East End poet St John Bossom under the title, Life is like a double bed. Why did you call it that? Well, I've always believed that it's that is true of life. It's probably the most profound statement I've ever made in my life, you know. With all the things that like, are gone and a posterior and all that, you know, and all the phrases and, and all that, you know, I think it's the most meaningful thing I've ever said. Life is like a double bed. Why? Why what? <laughs> Why is life like a double bed? Well, if you're going to bleed and argue about it, life ain't like a double bed. <laughs> You know, don't get your knickers in a twist, love. I'm only talking, you know, you know. Mr. Bossom, you've yeah. got this reputation for not conforming, for being a bit of a rebel. No, Do you feel no. this is due to your upbringing, your background? Yeah, definitely, mm. yeah, yeah. Because, like, my whole family, we're like, we don't conform, you know. I mean, why should you? We like, we don't, we, we won't be dictated to, you know. We like, we do, so we go our own way, do our own thing, you see. I mean, that's what it's about, man, isn't it, you know. And that, like, my, my mum, she's a rebel. My mum cooks with Kerrygold. <laughs> 
<laughs> and you know, some mornings, like when we like having coffee, we just have it, you know, just have a coffee, just like that, you know, when we don't shake the jar and listen to the grand music. <laughs> Not unless we, if we feel like it, we do, you know, and we get that nice Jamaican lady from next door to come and, you know, jiggle a bath like it. But if we don't feel like it, you know. I mean, the thing is, you see, if you don't conform like nowadays, you know, people think there's something wrong with you, don't they? I mean, like, I've got a long hair, haven't I, you know? Well, you've got long hair as well, but I mean, you, you ain't a fella, are you? <clears throat> anyway, I mean, they see me walking down the road with long hair, and they think, aye, oh, aye, you know, they think straight away that I'm a smoked addict. Uh, uh, smoke addict. You know, I want to partner all that all the time, don't I? You know, then they find out me name's Bossum. Well, that's a stupid name to give a kid, isn't it? Bossum. Well, it's neither one thing nor the other. <laughs> and then when they find out... <laughs> then when they find out I'm a poet, I mean, they think, aye, aye, you know, long hair and a poet, aye, aye, I get livid. You know, I could hit him with my handbag sometimes. <laughs> With all this ready-made entertainment available at the touch of a button, do you think there still exists within people the urge to write? Well, all I can say to that, darling, is walls. <laughs> you look at a whitewashed wall anywhere in London, it ain't whitewashed for long, is it? I mean, the grubby little pencils are out, scribbling on there, Kilroy was here. <laughs> Happy New Year to all our readers. <laughs> I mean, there's probably as much feeling gone into Fred Fancy's flow than the whole of Charles Dickens, Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> I mean, I'll tell you, I've seen some lovely work. I'll tell you, there's a, there's a wash and brush up in Chatham. <laughs> I've never read poetry like it in my life. <laughs> Beautiful it is, the meter, it scans, it's poetic, you know, one or two spelling mistakes. <laughs> and some of them illustrated. <laughs> Lovely, shows vivid imagination in that, you know. It's a beautiful sight, it really is. You should go and have a look. Oh, you can't, can you? <laughs> but it really is beautiful there. Why do you suppose that they find inspiration in a place like that? The solitude. The magic of the moment. <laughs> this feeling of being cut off. I mean, how can you define the intangerine? Mr. Bossom, may we now have a poem from your new book? Right, yeah, this book is called Now is the Winter of My Discotheque. And this poem sums up for me in its entirety all the superfluity of modern living and everyday uh, affairs and all that. <laughs> the soldier sat in the army jail and his mother had brought him a pudding. <laughs> but the sergeant said it was against the rules, even though it was a good one. <laughs> then he saw the look in the mother's eyes and he knew she was feeling hurt. So he did a thing he thought he'd never do. He helped a soldier to desert. <laughs> the soldier got hold of his pudding. <laughs> and he ran with it back to his cell. <laughs> then, put out your pudding for drink. <laughs> He heard the sergeant yell. If you want treacle on your pudding, put it out without delay. The soldier put out his pudding and the sergeant took it away. At the recent Samuel Pepys exhibition, no fewer than eight complaints were received that the Samuel Pepys singers did not appear. So we're going to put things right now, and here are the eight Samuel Pepys singers. <laughs> a shy young maid has took a room down at the village inn. Her bedside light is oh so bright and the curtains oh so thin. At nine o'clock she enters her room, at half past nine she sleeps. 
Lord Clarendon walks quickly on, but naughty Samuel peeps. <laughs> On Tuesday night I kissed her hand, oh, I was very keen. It was eleven inches long, the biggest hand I've seen. But as I kissed that hand, a thought into my mind was put. If that hand had been one inch longer, I'd have kissed the foot. Oh, you know which right is like, how white and it's all written down in his diary. I said, pray tell me, what would you do if you fell in the sea one day? Would you tear all your clothes off so that you might swim away? She said I would keep my blouse on, that's the method I'd employ. For the air gets underneath it, and it acts just like a boy. Oh, we know it's right, it's a black and white, and it's all written down in his diary. Yes, oh, we, we know, know it's right, it's black, black and white, and it's all written down in his diary. gentlemen very much indeed and uh, that's all we've time for now but we look forward to seeing you all again very very soon till then bye bye <laughs> Chance to grow.